Anyway, my guests are Ron Moorhead and Scott Nelson. Uh, here's Ron. You're back, right? I am. Okay, good. And uh, if um, Scott hasn't passed out yet, he's here. <laughs> you, yes, I am. Okay, Scott, unfortunately, is in a room full of big servers making noise in the background. So we actually made him take his sock off and put it over the phone. <laughs> and so if you hear him shifting around, like backing away from the phone a lot, well... You can judge for yourself what that might mean. All right, you guys. So we actually have Bigfoot sounds. Uh, all kidding aside, uh, you don't often get a crypto linguist on, on the air along with a Bigfoot researcher with sounds to actually talk about them. That's pretty cool. Uh, I would obviously like to play one. I guess we would call this number one. And uh, if that's okay with you, that's exactly, exactly what I'm going to do. And I, I may play it uh, actually... Uh, twice, uh, just so we, or even more than that, you never know. Uh, let's play it once and then we will talk about it. So, here it comes. I think. Ready? Good Lord. Um, I had no idea what was coming. Holy mackerel, uh, guys. I don't know what to say about that. My God. Um, uh, um, all right. So I don't know anything about it. I've got the experts. Um, Ron, if you would please, that particular recording. Oh my <laughs> good heavens. Where did that come from? Our Sierra camp, eight miles in the wilderness of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Uh, yeah, we were recording these creatures. It was pretty uh, intimidating to start with there, and as you might have guessed, when these things were pretty close to us, too, right outside our shelter uh, quite often. And uh, anyway... Uh, if I, I heard that, that, that was, I mean, that was clear, and it was, you know, plenty ambiguous, I guess, but very, very clear, and it sounded like it was very, very close, and if I was there recording that, it would scare the hell out of me. Well, that's how I got involved. One of the guys wouldn't go back up there. Don't and, blame him. Uh, he wouldn't go back by himself, I should say. And he hadn't been back since that I know of. Don't blame uh, him. Pretty frightening. Very religious man. He didn't know where to put this with his uh, with his religious structure because uh, it just didn't fit in his paradigm. But uh, I don't have much of a religious structure, and I don't know where to put it, and I'd be running. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I am... God. Uh, first of all, what were we, were we, were we hearing? Is it... One Bigfoot, or is it two of them, or what? Well, we believe it was two, but let Scott jump in on this one. Okay, Scott, uh, that well, that was a lot to decipher. Oh, yeah, and uh, like I said before, we're, we're far from actually deciphering it or, or translating it, but uh, what we can do with that is, is point out the characteristics of language that are evident in those utterances. And what you have there is a obviously a male. When you slow it down, you can really hear it. You don't have to be a a Ph.D. in uh, linguistics specialist to hear the language. All right, are, 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 con- that is not slowed down. I'm sorry to interrupt. That yeah. is regular speed, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, but when you slow it down, especially, I mean, you, it, if you listen to it long enough, even the layman can hear that you have a female and a male uh, having discourse, uh, conversational turns where they take turns in in speaking to each other. I agree. Um, yeah, so um, you listen to it enough, uh, you can hear it even at real time. You don't have to slow it down. 
But slowing it down makes it very evident to uh, anybody that, that's ever sat through our presentation and listened to it uh, walks away uh, knowing that they're they're listening to a language. I've got to agree. I, it sounded like a language to me. By the way, years ago we had a, a human sound expert uh, listen to it, a very qualified person, and she said the female won that argument. Just hey. throw that out. <laughs> so, so in other words, the worlds are similar in some ways. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to listen to this again, and um, Scott, as we do listen again, mm -hmm. what should we be listening for to try and make well, a little uh, sense out of this? I mean, not that we'll understand it, but I mean, is it a fight? Uh, well, you know, it sounds like that to us. Uh, it sounds like that they're at least in a uh, higher state of agitation, but then again, you know, it, the more you listen to it, the more it begins to sound like a, a, a married couple. <laughs> uh, you know, during just in a, yes, a regular uh, conversation. Yes, yeah. <laughs> for a married couple. Yes, um, you can hear a human say something in the background. Um, what is that? Mm -hmm. That was Warren oh, well, Johnson, who was uh, basically the oracle up there for us until he passed away. And or unless he wasn't there and I was, then I would uh, I would be the one that would call out to them or. We tried to entice them. We, we at first we were um, we were intimidated by it because of the sounds are yes. pretty intimidating. But after a while, you realize they weren't going to break through the shelter at us, and uh, they knew we wasn't going to shoot at them. We all had guns. We we're hunters, a hunting camp, uh -huh. and uh, so that was uh, Warren Johnson, and uh, he was just yelling out at him. Uh, Ron, he said that's not very nice. You said you had a gun, right? Yes, we have guns. If you were able to take a bead on a Bigfoot and choose to either pull the trigger or not, what would you do? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. No, there are more to them than that, and I think if you had that aura about you, I don't think we'd had the encounters we were having. Uh, they're, they're very stealthy, very elusive, uh, very fast. I can't begin to tell you how fast they are, the way they move, uh, and... Uh, no, I wouldn't shoot at them. I, I think there's they're more like a people than they are a, than they are an animal out in the woods. Well, it's like an ultimate, you know, it's like an ultimate question that gets a lot of debate about whether the just one at least should be shot so we identify a species. You know, uh, yeah, our, we just had that debate this last weekend. Uh, Scott and I did in a conference we had in Oklahoma, and uh, uh, pro kill people were there to do some filming and. Uh, they got booed off, I tell you, uh, for the most part. It, it's a series uh, called Killing Bigfoot. And um, uh, really, they said, well, how, you just about have to kill one, bring it in for science to accept them. And I said, no, you don't. There's so much anecdotal e evidence now. Uh, that, And you got DNA. You can. There's all kinds of things that you can pull out of the wind now or pull out. <laughs> all right, well, I'm, I'm going to play this, this number one again. And, Scott... We should be listening to this kind of like you'd listen to a husband and a wife, uh, sure. possibly in a, in sure. a minor dispute. <laughs> I guess I'll put it that sure. way. Okay, here we go. Get it. Uh, it. It does sound like she won, and he wasn't real happy about it. He was sort of walking away, grumbling. 
<laughs> we kind of think, Art, that they were uh, they were maybe having a confrontation over some food we left out. Oh, uh, that could be it. Uh, originally, we they, we thought the sounds were uh, towards us. The aggression was towards, and they could have been towards us. But we were leaving food out our leftovers. That's what originally got them started coming in. It's a family of them up there in the uh, Sierras. What our did camp, you leave for them? Uh, well, uh, originally we were leaving spam. We'd fry spam and leave it out. But whatever food we took in, they would take. And uh, anywhere from huh. if we took canned stew up there on our mules or something, we would use that. Uh, whatever we had out is what they would generally take. Until one time we left some uh, rotten, rotten meat out, basically. We, at that time we thought they'd eat about anything like a bear would. But right. Uh, we had just dug a hole earlier that summer and had some fresh mount, amount of dirt and... Uh, Left that bad meat out, and they took it and buried it under that dirt. And have a, I have a picture of this, a big handprint over the mound, and underneath that handprint was the was the meat that we left out. I see. So, I didn't uh, think too much of that. Yeah, apparently not. Uh, Scott, if you had the opportunity to go along with Ron up into the deep woods yes. where you're liable to encounter these creatures, uh, would you go or would you wait for the tape? Uh, we've, uh, I've gone actually, uh, me and my son, Stephen, have gone up, uh, several times with Ron. Really? Uh, and several times, uh, Ron and I have gone up by ourselves. We've had, uh, quite a few, uh, interesting adventures, you could say. Uh, any of them involving Bigfoot? Uh, yes, a few. We had some, uh, we've, we've had things thrown at us. We've had, uh, strange sounds around the camp. Um, Ron heard a morphine stream in the middle of the night, which uh, we were unable to uh, record. Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of activity up there. I have a Absolutely. very very famous uh, a Bigfoot scream that Linda Moulton Howe recorded. I'm sure you guys have heard it, right? Hmm? Is that a I, yes? I know of her. Sure I don't know if I've heard the scream. I've heard a lot of screams. I'll dig it out. Um, it's, a, it's a blood-curdling scream. There's no question about that. Our Bigfoot capable of big blood curdling screams I believe so yes oh I'm quite certain they're uh, just from just from the evidence that we have we have to assume that their lungs are just massive the, the resonance of their utterances are just uh, is just off the scale mm-hmm. um, do you have a like a measurement of uh, the biggest I don't, I don't want to say the biggest Bigfoot, but the average height of a Bigfoot. Is there any way to make a guess at that? Uh, there really isn't. Depends if they're a young one or not, or just I've <laughs> I reason to believe there's some that are 12 foot tall. Wow. Uh, we had a prince up there, nine inch prince, along with 18 inch prince. I think that was the uh, an adolescent and its mother, and uh, this. This huge one that uh, we never found it right in camp because I think this thing is just so big it, it just can't stand behind one of those trees. But it had a 25 and a half inch track, the biggest one. I didn't mm. talk about this one for a long time because the distance between the tracks were 13 feet, and that's just you got to do the math on that. Uh, it, it, we followed it till we couldn't follow it anymore, uh, off the, off into oblivion there. But it was just uh, uh, quite remarkable how something so big can still remain so hidden. Yes, it is. Uh, some would say impossible, but maybe not impossible. Ron, you're you're actually up in Bigfoot country, right? I am. I'm on the Olympic Peninsula now. I live in uh, Washington State. Now, how about you, Scott? Where are you? Um, I'm in, uh, in Missouri, which is also Bigfoot country. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and somehow East Texas. I don't know why, but it seems like a lot of reports in East Texas. Uh, all right, you guys, I want you to listen to this. This is reportedly the real thing. Uh, it does come from Linda Moulton Howe, who investigates this kind of thing. And th- mm-hmm. this is the sound uh, that sh- she came up with. Listen. <laughs>
There, there you have it. Um, mm-hmm. At a distance, recorded at a distance, obviously, but boy, that that doesn't change the the tone of that at all. Yikes! 